Hello everyone and welcome back to more Mystic Destinies! This time we are ready and geared up to go for book number two for Hikaru's route! Yes, because in the last episode I have ended off on book one prematurely. Didn't know it was a really short episode as you guys you guys have seen. And of course I went back and I did all the possible bad endings that I could have gotten for that book one as well and any other things that I might have missed out on. And but yeah, anyways, regardless. Regardless, it was a very short episode. We basically ended off getting the last piece, but then when we, you know, from the cosmos, list, I should say. But when we, you know, you released the pieces back into Hikaru's uh, body and they went back in, nothing really happened. He didn't w he wake up. So we were suspicious that maybe there must be more pieces kind of, you know, floating around somewhere. So Galen and Haruka kind of went off to the side to try and see where those pieces might be. And as Haruka was coming back to tell us about something like Hikaru's past, Blink, which I say lover, I assume it's lover, Sineka shows up and she's like, hey man, what's going on? You know, what's what y'all doing? And Galen was just like, oh, okay, you know, how'd you get in there? You know, and she was just like, oh, went through the back door and he was like, like, oh, okay, so, you know, uh, I think Gallon and her were just having a back and forth kind of bantering going on about God business and shit. But anyways, Haruka was kind of in the back, was like, hey, she needs, you know, Hana really needs to get going. Like, she needs to go back and she needs to leave to, you know, where that place I was talking about. So Gallon, of course, was like, oh yeah, right. And so he snaps his fingers and then we were sent everything. All, like, we didn't, you know, soul transport ourselves. We we were sent whole, a whole being to another dimension of some sort. And I don't even know. Anyways, that, and that's where the book left off on that cliffhanger. And then we went back and we got all his possible bad endings. And then yeah, so now now we go now we are ready and geared to go for book number two, which is called Reflections, which I have purchased right soon after. I was like, oh my god, I, I was just, I was so sure I didn't know I was that close to finishing off book one. So yeah, which is why I'm making it up to you guys for this week to do a double upload on Mystic Destinies because you know I felt like you know. Yeah, I just can't. I can't leave you like that. I won't leave you like that. So anyways, book two. Holy shit. Cosmos of the Demigod is where we are going. Day one, day two, day three. Wow, we are spending... We are going on a vacation, you guys, to the Cosmos of the Demigod. So I assume... Wow, I was kind of wrong. I was proven wrong because I was like, what more cosmos is there unless something pops up? Well, actually, no, I was kind of right in a way where something pops up. Then, oh, well, you, lo and behold, there's the cosmos of the demigod. So let's go visit. Let's see how things are popping in the hood in there. So day one. Can we go to day one? No. What do you mean? And the cosmos of the last sorcerer is no fucking way. Hey. Hey now, but I says, it says I got it though. I got it though. Hello, book two. What do I do? Do I have to go through book one? Oh, do I have to pick up from book one? Is that it? Is that why it's not letting me go through it? Oh, maybe. Okay, guys. Anyways, yeah, let's kickstart this book into gear by going through book one. I don't know if it'll work through my saves. That's the only thing. Actually, no. I should try that first, shouldn't I? Because this is a much longer process. So let's try that first. Let's try reloading a save that right before it ended off on book one. So which right over here, uh, I'm gonna speed through it. If it works, I'll catch you. I'll, you'll see jump cut, and you'll see me. It'll see. It'll go straight into book two. So hopefully it works. If not, then it's a pain in the ass to just fucking go through book one all over again. Anyways, let's go. There we go. Okay, book two. What? You kind of missed it. Yeah, there we go. Ages gone past. Cosmos of the demigod. Day one. There we go. At least that worked. They smart me. Smart me. Decides to do the smart thing. <laughs> Yay. Yeah, but you only missed a little bit of that little... What's it called? That little screen thing that says book two. Sh a big book two reflection and a little bit of a th art thing going on. But anyways, here we are. So is this... Is this... Is this in the past? Oh yeah, okay. I assume we've been transported to the past, everyone. Yes. So ten days. I didn't know it then, but I would spend ten days in the past with Hikaru. Goodness. I stumble forward and almost run headfirst into a tree. Graceful. I hold my hands out just in time to stop myself from hitting it. I lean against the tree and take a deep breath to steady myself, and as I regain myself, I begin to take in my surroundings. I'm in a forest. It would seem so. Pu pushing myself away from the tree, I nearly stumble once again. What the? What am I wearing? Whoa, I, we get, yeah, we get a whole makeover. Going back to the past. Yay. I run my hands over the smooth fabric, tracing the beautiful cherry blossom pattern. A kimono. It's lovely, but how? Either Gallon or Hikaru must 
Oh, either Gallon or Haruka. I always mix up their names. Haruka must have somehow given it to me. You know, being gods and all, they can give me a makeover as well too. If they can send me to the past, you know, why not? Help me blend in. I barely know how to wear one. Being overseas, overseas for so much of my life didn't give me too many chances to learn. Well, it's okay. It looks like you got it on proper, right? I sigh. I wonder if this is if, if this has any magical properties. I hope so. It doesn't seem like it's anything special, but knowing Galen, well, it's hard to tell either way. At least it's not a dress made of tentacles, I guess. <laughs> then you just look like Ursula. I sigh again. Oh, what am I even thinking? The weirdness of everything is finally getting to me. If I was sent here, that means Hikaru is, is here somewhere. So I better start looking before it gets too dark to see anything. Right. I need a place to stay. Do you got an Airbnb here that I can, you know, stay for a couple of days? No? I mean, you put me in a new outfit. You give me an Airbnb. I start my trek through the forest. The wooden sandals quietly thump against the earth, barely audible in the symphony of the evening forest. My walk isn't as easy or as fast as I would like it to be. Of course not. I would assume that kimonos are very hard to walk around in. Uh, the ground isn't particularly even, with rocks and tree roots everywhere. There's hardly anything one might call solid ground. I carefully step forward, and with each step I take, I feel myself wobble. Time passes, and after a while, it feels like I've barely made any progress walking like this. It would, very, it would be very nice if someone shows up right now. Uh, I'm starting to feel frustrated when I feel my foot catch on something. And there I go. I try to put my leg out to stop myself from falling somehow, but unused to the lack of mobility, I fall entirely forward instead. Ouch. Straight into someone's waiting arms. Hey! Thank goodness gracious! <laughs> Hikaru, your hair! It's so long! I look up to see that that someone just happens to be Hikaru. Yes, so I did say I wanted someone to show up right, now, right about now. At least I think it's Hikaru. His hair is long and he's wearing a very and he's wearing very different clothing than what I'm used to seeing him in. Well yeah, you know, times times are different and shit. And you know, appropriate era clothing is needed. But as we stare into each other's eyes with surprise written on our faces, I become certain that it is him. Uh, I know those eyes anywhere. Yes. Lady Shizuka? Nope. <laughs> Not really. No, your eyes. You cannot be. Nah, no. I'm startled out hearing Hikaru call me that, but suddenly it all clicks. Of course, I should have known. The woman he kept saying I reminded him of, it has to be Shizuka. Yes, no one else looks like me. Looks scarily like me. How do you know Shizuka? Is she here? I could ask the same of you. What? Oh, 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 oh. Hikaru, what did you- Hikaru, did you find what the noise was? Oh. Ah. You're a very different looking Shizuka. My. Oh well, I guess that would make sense because we traveled back in the past and she- she's lived- Oh no. Right, I keep thinking that Shizuka has already her- has already gotten her immortality curse when she kind of like was, you know, Named the sorceress and shit like that, but no, she got it later on in her life, probably in like her mid twenties, early thirties kind of thing, kind of deal. But I'm pretty sure in this timeline right now, she's like early twenties, so she's that's before the immortality curse. So she's obviously aging. So obviously she looks younger here. Yes. So who I have to guess is some version of Shizuka herself comes into view. He kind of quickly lets go of me and steps back. Uh, he looks at Shizuka. Uh, I found only this strange woman stumbling about. She mentioned your name with familiarity. Do you know who she is? Oh, no, of course not. I am your homunculus daughter that you will have in the future. I stare at Shizuka with a plethora of emotions I can hardly identify. It's like seeing my own face reflected back at me, but my mother's too. Yeah, it's very confusing. This woman looks so much more innocent than Shizuka though. Yeah, because she's way younger. And before she got cursed. I don't quite know how to process being face to face with the woman who would one day curse me. But why is she in Hikaru's past? And why the hell are the and why the hell are we all dressed like this? Uh, good question, but she looks that way because, you know, it's before she got cursed. Shizuka's confused face becomes serious as she seems to scrutinize every every aspect of me. With both of them staring at me like I have three heads, I begin to feel uncomfortable. Maybe I should explain things. Well, how? Explain your mission to save Hikaru. Tell Shizuka you're her daughter. She deserves to know nothing. Well, no. No, 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 no. 
She, for this, in this moment at least, she doesn't deserve that animosity. Not yet. And she, and again, even then, it's like her future self did did the things she did to us for a, a reason. Like, like she didn't want to do it, kind of thing. But she did it either way. Uh, so tell. I think this this is more warranted, right? This would freak her out. She'd be like, "Uh, oh, but dude, <laughs> explain your mission to save Hikaru." Um, you see, I came from a different timeline to save Hikaru. Yes, I'm from the future. To save Hikaru? Yes. Shizuka looks like Hikaru. Is something bad going? Is something bad going to happen to him? Yes. I hesitate, then nod. Uh, this is finally my Hikaru, isn't it? That's what Haruka said. My Hikaru? Wait, hold on. I, I did save. <laughs> okay, anyways, yeah. I mean the Hikaru from my timeline, is it? Yes, actually, will you listen to my story? This could be a trick, Lady Shizuka. Ah, oh, shut up. <laughs> I don't see the harm in letting her speak. She seems like a curious young woman. Yeah, come on. Thank you. I'm really not trying to trick you. I have no reason to do that, right? I search my thoughts for the best way to convince them without simply freaking them out. I would rather avoid getting attacked by these two if possible. Right. Oh, of course, the earring. I hold out my hand and summon Hikaru's and summon Haruka's earring to my palm, holding it out for Hikaru to see. Do you recognize this? Yeah, where did you obtain this? Yeah, of course you'd ask me that. From your mother. As the words leave my lips, I realize the unfortunate implications they might have. I didn't kill her for it! I didn't do it! I rush to add an explanation before Hikaru can decide to draw his weapon on me. She gave it to me to help convince you. Hikaru wordlessly stares down at the earring, but doesn't take it. Finally, he speaks. Even were, even were that true, my mother does not possess time travel abilities. Yeah, because I met Galen. It, it wasn't her that sent me here. It was... I hesitate to speak his name. Is it okay to tell anyone about him? Well, he didn't say not to, and I'm kind of getting vibes that Hikaru might just cut me down if I don't convince him soon. So yeah, whatever, YOLO. With both Shizuka and Hikaru's piercing, gaze, piercing stares on me, I break down and say it. It was a god named Galen. Do you know... Galen? Yes, Galen? Well, I guess that definitely means they know him, at least. Though, Hikaru doesn't sound too happy about it. I think back to how Hikaru reacted to Galen in the other timelines, which was why, which was pretty much all of fuck you and he's annoying. Hehehe, <laughs> yes. I wonder what kind of bad blood they have between- I wonder what kind of bad blood they have between them. I look at Hikaru, who seems to be practically pouting in thought. <laughs> I look at Shizuka instead and force myself to continue. Yes, Galen, the god of chaos, sent me here. In the future, Hikaru... Once again, I hesitate. Is it okay to tell him the future? Won't that, like, mess it up or something? Then again, I'm pretty sure I've already messed it up by just being here. Right. I feel frustration at Galen for not telling me literally anything before shoving me off. Right. Huh. So what do I do? Do I just go? Do I just go for it? But, then, but an image of the crazy goddess comes to mind and nervousness grips at my heart. I'm almost afraid to even think her name in case that somehow summons her to me. Her, no, that's silly. She can't possibly find me like that, can she? I mean, she found you all the other times, so I don't doubt it. I wonder what happened when I left. I wonder if he kept her there. Has He has been oddly quiet. I hope he's still alive. Are you always this concise? In the future, what will happen to me? Hey, I'm doing my best here. I just don't want to mess the- I don't- I just don't want to mess anything up, okay, right? Okay? You don't know any- Do you not know the first rule of time traveling? Uh, Hikaru seems surprised at my directness, but I ignore his reaction and continue on. Uh, Hikaru will encounter a, a goddess named Suneka, and he'll have his soul blown apart trying to protect me from her. His soul was, will be, scattered across time, clinging to other Hikarus, and... I'm hoping this is the last place I've got to go to find them, to wake him up and save him. The Weaver of Time. Yes, her. How far in the future are you from? Are you... Are you... Oh, shit. <laughs> yep, that would be her. <laughs> A loud, inhuman, inhuman screech shatters, to cal shatters the calm atmosphere, cutting Hikaru off in the middle of his sentence. Uh, I can barely blink before three humanoid creatures jump out at us from the bushes. What? They surround us from all sides and rush at us. Their movements seem strange, they're fast with how they move around us. Yet they themselves seem stiff and awkward. But I have no time to study them further. Oh god, oh god. The three grotesque creatures rush at, si rush at Shizuka. 
but before she can so much as lift a finger, Hikaru jumps up before her with a fierce yell. A sword already drawn, he cuts one of them down quickly. But the two others manage to dodge out of the way, jumping back out of reach of his blade. Yeah. The creatures in, Hi in Hikaru lock into some wild dance, slashing at each other, hits barely grazing the opponent. I'm mesmerized, almost, but out of the corner of my eye, I see movement. Uh, can you do magic here, Shizuka? Are you that good yet? I don't know. <laughs> I turn to see two other creatures rush at Shizuka from behind. She doesn't seem to notice as she watches Hikaru take down another one of the creatures. I hardly have time to think about it. I throw up a glowing orange. I throw up an orange glowing barrier around her. Well, okay, I guess I'll just have to do the work. Just as I lunge at her, the creatures impact with my defenses. Unexpectedly, however, as soon as they hit my barrier, they screech horribly and burn away into ash in an instant. Ooh, what? What did I do? I didn't know I was that powerful. I drop my barrier from the sheer force of surprise at the fate of these creatures. I hear Hikaru take down the last one, and yet I can't stop staring at where my barrier held just moments ago. In the end, the fight ends so quickly that Hikaru and I were the only ones who got any sort of action. Which is good, I mean, yeah. I think we had better continue this conversation elsewhere. The forest is no place for dialogue. Yes. My heart pounds away at my ribcage. What were those things? I'm suddenly in I Edo, Japan. You know, like Inuyasha style. Jesus. They were Jinkiniki. Oh my god. <laughs> Jinkiniki? Though they only eat human corpses, so it is strange for them to have attacked us like that. I'm pretty sure it has, it's Seneca that did something. I must wonder if some outside force is at work here. It is. There is. Outside force. Uh, something may be corrupting the residents of this forest, turning them feral. It's probably Suneka. I glance over at Hikaru who seems deep in thought as we walk out of the forest. I can't help but think back to how quickly he eh, to how quickly Hikaru moved, to moved in to protect Shizuka. I'm... how am I even supposed to feel about that? Well, it's a different time, okay? It's, we don't have time. We don't. We don't have time for that. Envious but understanding. There we go. I wish he would treat me even half as well as he already seems to treat Shizuka. Why does he always seem to hate me immediately? Even as I ask myself, I realize that I'm not sure. I'm not sure why I care. It's because you you secretly have a crush on him. I have to remind myself that I'm doing this to pay him back for saving me. Hikaru doesn't owe me anything. Okay, so we walk. By the time we get out of the forest, by the time we get out of the deep forest, night has already fallen. Wow, that's a l big forest then. The moment we finish setting up camp, Hikaru begins to throw question after question at me. Uh, he asks about he asks five before I can even open my mouth to answer one. Okay, chill, Jesus. I try to listen to his questions to make some sort of sense of it all, but I'm so tired my mind is barely registering any of it. Hikaru. Shizuka stops his questions with a single word. At that, I might at that I might have normally felt something, but more than anything right now, I just want to close my eyes and sleep forever. Today was a long and eventful one. I believe that we are all due for some rest. Wouldn't you say so? Uh, I'm sorry. It's I'm sorry. It seems you have us at a disadvantage. It appears that you are familiar with our names, but we, but we do not know yours. Oh wait. Uh, it's hella weird being asked my own name by my mother. Uh, but nothing is ordinary about this about the situation anyway. Well, this is before she knew you, okay? This is before you actually existed. Oh, it's Hana. My name is Hana. Ah, yes. What a beautiful name. Then, Hana, is it okay with you if we rest first? Yes. Uh, before any further questioning can take place. Yes. Uh, she briefly glances at Hikaru at that last part as if waiting for any objections. Oh yeah, I don't mind. Uh, some rest would be good. Oh. Uh, yeah, I need rest. As I say that, I realize that I have nothing to sleep on. Uh, Hikaru sighs. Uh, you can use my bedroll to sleep. Oh, uh, okay. I feel awkward at the sudden offer, but I nod my thanks. As weird as, weird as it is, I do feel grateful for it. Yay! <laughs> Hikaru lies it out for me, and I immediately lie down on it, and pass the fuck out. I try to get comfortable, but the bedroll offers little to no cushioning. Oh, well, you're going to have to deal with it. It's basically the same as being on the ground, except a little cleaner. <laughs> and yet I find that my body doesn't care as I slowly start to drift off. Being outside of time has left me with no sleep for who knows how long, yes. Uh, so right now even the ground feels as comfortable as the softest of beds. Bye. Oh, day two! Okay, that was day one. Okay, so day two then. 
So yeah, ages have gone past. Castles of the demigod day two. Ugh. Hannah's log day two. Mental log. Where the hell am I? When I wake up in the morning, I find that Hikaru's already awake. He's uh, an early riser, early bird, and all I can see is his back and long hair silhouetted against the sunrise. I catch myself staring at him for longer than necessary, just as he turns around and notices me. Oh, um, did you ever go to sleep last night? No, my body does not require sleep every night. Oh, wow. Oh, is that because you're a Debbie god? Uh, yes, and no. Huh? Meaning... Yes, my body requires less sleep than normal humans because of the god within me. But not all demigods are the same. Oh, okay, so we all have different abilities and needs. Some demigods are closer to humans and some are closer to gods. Oh, which are you? Closer to god, I assume? Some gods would say I am closer to being a human. Oh, really? Huh. Humans would say I am closer to being a god. Oh, that makes me. It does not really matter in the end. I am what I am. Yeah, okay, so maybe you're split down in the middle. Right in the middle, like perfectly. Then why do you look that way when you talk about it? Uh, Shizuka steps out of the biz. Ah, uh, Shizuka steps out of the bushes. Then and only then do I realize that she had been gone the entire time. Huh. Everyone has already. Everyone was already up except for me. Must they must think I'm lazy? No, you don't know what I've been through. Okay, I've been time jumping and cosmos going and everything, and a lot of shit has happened to me. Okay. I avoid Shizuka's eyes, feeling all at once uncomfortable knowing that it's my mother before me. Everything happened so fast the day before I- Before that, I still have- been, eh. Everything happened so fast the day before that I still haven't processed my feelings. Hell, I have no idea how I'm supposed to be feeling right now. Well, you're just gonna have to go with it. Perpetual panic and anxiety, probably. The only mother I have ever known is finally here before me again, but she's also the woman who will eventually curse me. And on top of it, I still don't know why she's here or who she is to Hikaru. Probably a lover, you know? Did you sleep well? She holds out a rice ball. Oh, rice onigiri, yes! You can eat this before brec- You can eat this for breakfast. Oh, yes. Why do you care? Thank you. Uh, dot dot dot. Thank you! You're so kind to me! Yes. Oh no, I'm fine. I look at the rice ball in her hand as- And as if on cue, my stomach growls like a dying beast. I feel my cheeks heat up as Shizuka simply smiles down at me. Thank you. I notice that Hikaru is watching with the interaction carefully, so I reach out and take the rice ball from Shizuka without further comment. As I bite into it, I quickly realize how truly hungry I was. Right? It's- I mean, it's- it's- it's one thing to be really petty, but it's another thing to starve yourself, okay? Like, just take the food. <laughs> you need it. How long has it been since I've had any food? Too long. A question that I can't answer for myself, but the recent events and me hopping between timelines and time, I can't even begin to guess how long it's been. Yes, I'm a little disoriented. I'm more than, you know, jet-lagged. Would you be willing to finish your story from yesterday now? Yes. Yes, though I've pretty much told you all of it already, I need the soul fragments that this Hikaru has, I think. Uh, I'm not entirely sure how this works since you are that Hikaru from my timeline. I put a hand to my head, gently rubbing my temple. Yeah, I don't know how this works. Galen didn't exactly give me a detailed, a detailed description on what to do. And sometimes, his, and sometimes he answers when I call out to him, sometimes he doesn't. He hasn't since. He hasn't since I got here. Yeah. How far in the future? Very far. Huh? Yeah. How many years in the future does all this happen? Where are you from? Uh, oh. <laughs> uh, suddenly I feel very awkward because I don't actually know. Um, just what year is it? Galen didn't even tell you that much? Nope, <laughs> he's that sloppy. I'm telling you, I don't know anything. Why am I not surprised? Exactly. The year is 1482. Holy shit! I feel like I've been hit in the face with a ton of bricks. My heart drops to my stomach. Yes, what? We are in Edo, Japan. I'm pretty sure. Surely I couldn't have heard that right. Nope, it's true. 1482. Our, Mikai our Mikado, 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 our Mikado is Emperor Go Tsuchimikado, and our Shogun is Ashikaga Yoshihasa. Yoshi, Yoshihisa. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Please don't make me say that again. <laughs> Do either of these names sound familiar? No. Probably in history textbooks, yes, but no. Not personally. Maybe, yeah, maybe from history books, yes. God, how old is Hikaru then? Old as balls. Uh, but not prob not as old as Galen, probably. From the 
From the look on your face, I am guessing that they are known to you. Yeah, well... Are you perhaps further in the past than you expected? Yes. <laughs> I nod numbly. Uh, I'm from the year 2016. Yeah. <laughs> it's a big jump. <laughs> Are you really telling the truth? Well, do you think I'm that creative to make the shit up? I truly have that long of a life. I truly have that long of a life ahead of me. Yes, you do. I guess so. When I met when I meet you, you don't look much you don't look much different than you do now. Except for the shorter hair, but other than that, no. In my time, you look like you're in your late 20s, I think. I am already 23 now. How does this happen? Wow, really? Oh my. <laughs> perhaps it has something to do with the Weaver of Time, or perhaps you really just do live that long naturally. I don't know. Uh, the, lifespan of a de the lifespan of demigods does vary, but that is over 500 years from now. Oh shit. I feel my heartstrings be being tugged at. at uh, I feel my heartstrings being tugged at as Hikaru's voice fades off into nothing. Why does he look so sad? I bet most people would love to live that long, but it's a very lonely life, you know. I look at Shizuka. Maybe it's because of her, but she's immortal. Still, maybe he doesn't know that. No, she's not immortal yet. Probably. Ugh, this is so confusing. The gods must have known all this, yet they didn't tell anyone. So, you are just here to collect these soul fragments then? I get, yeah, yes. <laughs> I mean, I'd love to change time and stop it from happening in the first place. But with a time goddess involved, I doubt that's an option even, I, even if I could, yeah. So I'm just trying to repair things, trying to save him. I look at Hikaru, then, then away. To save you, because you saved me. I just need you to give me your fragments, I think. A silence falls between the three of us. Hikaru sighs after a few quiet moments. Even if all this insanity is somehow true, I am afraid I cannot help you. What? Why? I do not know how to give these, fo these soul fragments to you. Soul magic, that sounds like the realm of the divine. Yes, oh shit. For the most part, all I know how to do is fight with my divine powers. But the other Hikarus knew they were able to pull it out, somehow, on their own. The maybe, then maybe those Hikarus had studied, had studied it further. Oh, if I had need, if I had need and access to the knowledge, I certainly would have. Either way, I cannot help you. Well then, I'm left sitting there, stunned as Hikaru begins to pick to pack up everyone's belongings. So where were you guys even headed, anyways, before I dropped in? What the hell? What should I? What should? What am I supposed to do now? Yes, why well, I don't even know why the should is there. What am I supposed to do? How am I going to save Hikaru? Galen, what am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to be like, hey, you need to learn then? I fight the urge to tear up as I feel Shizuka watch me. Uh, if you have no way back and no way forward, then why not come with us for now? Oh, true. Perhaps the answer will become clear in time, or Galen will finally answer you, when he's not so busy with whatever is going on over there. I look at Shizuka in surprise at the kindness in her voice and the gentle smile on her face. My heart squeezes involuntarily, and I look down at my hands with a frown. How dare she knows how dare she show me kindness now. But girl, she's she's you know huh, what's this? You're bleeding again? Ah. Uh, out playing with that Arai boy again, no doubt. He's going to get you into he's going to get you into so much trouble one day. Well he he did, technically. This is the seventh time that you've come home bleeding. I'm sorry, mommy. I know I ruined the dress you got me, but but Taku is Mom reaches out and gently strokes my head. I know, I'm sorry. Takumi is your important friend. I just wish for you to be safe. I wish there was a way I... I wish there was some way that I... that you could remain forever unharmed. Aw, oh, see? She wasn't so bad. Well, I feel so confused about everything. The odd dream, no... F the odd dream, no... flashback of something Mother had said when I was still in elementary school. What did she mean by that? Why am I remembering this now? Oh, Hikaru puts his bedroll on his back and looks at me. There are no other there are no other good choices and it, and it seems you can fight at least, right? Yes. <laughs> so you can help us out with what you were uh, with what we were doing for now. Yeah, what were you guys doing? His voice snaps me out of my daze. And what are you two doing? Yeah. We travel around and help those that need it, no more no less. Oh, so you're just nomads in a way. Good Samaritan nomads. We are on our way to a village now, about one or two days travel from here. Okay. I do not know what I do not know what Japan is like in 500 years, but threats around but threats abound here. Well, no shit. P 
pirates and pillagers and shit like that. So you will need to fight. Okay. I see. Well, it's not like I have any other choice. Damn you, Galen. But I am curious to see what Japan was really was really like at this time. Yes, and this is my chance to get to know Hikaru more, and more about my mother too. I never dreamed I would have an opportunity like this. Right, so take advantage of it. Alright, I'll do my best to help. So with all that settled, we head out to the road. Alright, off we go! Holding only our belongings and many questions in my mind, we begin our strange journey together. Okay! Oh, another forest! What do you know? <laughs> As we move through the past, I'm beginning to seriously respect my ancestors for traveling. Not only on such unwieldy, not only on such unwieldy paths, but in such terrible shoes for walking. Yes, man, what I wouldn't give for a pair of good sneakers right now. Already most of already most of a day has passed. Most of our traveling has consisted of Hikaru asking me questions about the future. I sure hope there isn't some kind of prime direct a prime directive law of non-interference crap amongst gods. Because if so, I've just totally broke it. Broken it. Yes, I told him about the cars. I'm sorry. <laughs> I think back to how different Hikaru seems while he asked me questions as we walked. Yes. Oh. Could you tell me about the future? Okay. Uh, sure. What do you want to know? Everything. Everything. I mean, er, just what things are like. How they are different. Very different. For for when if we wanted to travel, we don't walk. We, we take these things called buses and cars. I can't help but giggle. You're cute, you, you know, all curious and shit. Well, a lot of things are different. I mean, I only know what Japan was like in the past because of history books, and I'm not sure how accurate those are. But, there are proper roads and cars for one. There's actual technology, like smartphones, we dress completely different. Let's start off with something small, okay? Let's, let's just say we dress completely different. Well, we dress totally different. Yeah. We don't wear so much clothing, and it's way easier to put on and move in that- and move in- and move in than traditional Japanese clothing. I see. How do you keep your modesty, then? Modesty? Oh, well, it's not like you go around naked. Then again, some people practically do. Or, well, those of us who want to keep our modesty still cover everything. The clothes are just lighter. That makes sense. Improvements to the way we dress would help advance humanity overall. Oh, and we have lots of different kinds of shoes. They're way more comfortable and protective. Yeah, though people still wear though people still wear shoes like these too. I see. Yes. It all sounds amazing to think that one day I'll see it for myself. Yes. <laughs> Shizuka chuckles. I think he should I think he should be a scholar instead of a warrior. You will eventually. You're you be you become a teacher. <laughs> that's that's an equivalent to a scholar, right? Some form of scholar. <laughs> Maybe in some other life, I would rather help save lives. All right. In a small, quiet voice that I only just barely seem to hear, Hikaru adds, "I would like to be a hero to someone someday." Aw, oh, you're cute. Wow, it's dark. <laughs> I had no idea Hikaru had such a curious side. It's cute. I guess it makes sense, though. He did choose to be a professor. I should tell him. Oh, whoa. I trip. I suddenly trip over my own feet and stumble to the ground. Ow. Well, that was graceful of me. Well, I almost do anyway. Oh! Hikaru's fast reflexes managed to catch me by the clothing- by the clothes before I hit the ground. Oh, thanks. I hover above the ground for a moment, my nose almost touching it before I'm suddenly pulled upright. I stumble backward and Hikaru's large hand briefly touches my back to steady me. She sure isn't gentle. Jeez. <laughs> he just grabbed me by the back of my kimono. You could've ruined it. Are you alright? Yes. Yeah, thanks. I'm just getting really tired and I can't see well. Not without my glasses anyway. I suppose they didn't have them back then. Couldn't couldn't they have left me with mine? Yes. Plus I'm not used to walking in these in these shoes. I don't know how you guys do it. You just get used to it. <laughs> Shall we stop for the night then? I mean it's super dark. It was supposed to take us eight days to get to Sain Saina's village. We won't make it for another few days at this rate. Sainas? I don't even know how to pronounce that. <laughs> We've already been on the road for seven. We probably could have gone there tonight or tomorrow morning. I can't I can't help but feel miserable at what Hikaru is implying. But hey, it isn't my fault. Yeah, I'm the one who's just thrust into this er era, you know? I just don't have the energy to argue though. I'm not sure what else I can do. I'm doing my best. Right. Hikaru doesn't look at me, he only folds his arms. Oh now. 
Shizuka begins walking, leading this, leading this time. Come, I believe there is a good spot where, that we can rest for the night nearby. Okay, before long, Shizuka leads us to the promised spot and we set up camp for the night. I'm so tired that I end up passing out before I can even feel guilty for taking Hikaru's bedroll again. Heh <laughs> too bad. Too late! Day three! Wow, okay, so we just walked and walked and walked. <laughs> Jesus, okay. Day three, I think we can go for day three. How many days were there? I totally forgot. I think there was like ten? Ten days, yes, ten days. Um, I would say I want to split it to five days, but like, I don't even know. I don't even know, it might be too long, but I'll see where I am. Well, let's see where I am for time for now, and then I'll, I'll try to gauge it. Hannah's log, day three. I'm still good for time, so it's all good. We can go on. This is probably the most embarrassing and, embarrassing and unexpected moment of my life. What? We've been walking for what must be hours now. I seriously miss my phone. I mean, they don't even have watches here. Actually, correction, we haven't all been walking. I, in fact, have been riding on Hikaru's back the entire time. Oh, this is what she meant by embarrassing. Okay. <laughs> Lol. Anyways, whatever. Free ride. I don't care. I am beyond, you know, having my pride get the best of me. Onward, steed! I feel so lame right now. <laughs> I remember back to this morning. Oh, uh, what? Hey. Hey, what? Ah! Uh, I jumped back from Hikaru, who was crouching down, peering into my sleeping face. Ah, good. So you were awake. No, I just got up. But not before you... We need to go. As I mentioned last night, we are already behind schedule. Hikaru stands up and turns away from me. What? You're going to be riding me today. What? <laughs> That is not how you put it lightly. What? He kind of turns around. Okay, have you never ridden piggyback before? Nah, I have, but like, oh. <laughs> Come on, wash up so we can get moving. Oh, wait, what? A few minutes later, I had climbed onto his back and we set off through the forest again. Oh, I feel miserable in, uh, in about 10 different ways because of it. Lazy, ashamed, embarrassed, frustrated, the list goes on. I try not to think too much about the actual feeling, or the muscles I can feel through his clothes, or... You are very fit, sir. I clear my throat. I do have legs, you know. I know- I mumble for what's probably the fifth time. You do, but legs are only useful if they work well. Mine do, yours don't. <laughs> hey now! I can't argue with him because he- I can't argue with him because he does, in fact, have a point. Still, I end up pouting at the situation I've been put in. I'm not some kind of helpless girl. I doubt that you are, but still, you should not worry. Alright, I am a demigod. Okay, so I guess you have quite the stamina then. This does have some benefits. Not least, not least, strength and endurance outside of normal human capacity. Alright, yes, I figured. Taking advantage of that is not a bad thing. Right, I still feel like a literal burden though. Completely useless. I can't tell if it's just me or if everything he says is starting to sound like some kind of innuendo. The, is this the real Hikaru? Yeah, I guess so. I can understand why you might not like it. In that case, would it make you feel better if you spent your time learning? Learning what? Learning? Yes, you are a sorceress, are you not? Yes, I am. I... Uh, I haven't actually explained exactly who I am yet, but it seems like Shizuka figured at least some of it out. Yeah, well, because I just, I just threw a barrier up with no explanation, so, you know, <laughs> does she know everything? My mother always seemed to know everything all at once. Ah, uh, but since, but since I'm pretty sure, but since I'm pretty sure omnipotence would have been passed on through the ritual, I doubt she does just yet. Alright, I don't want to kill the mood by replying to her question by saying, Yeah, I am a sorceress because you passed your powers and curse onto me and kind of ruined my life, so for now I just nod. Yes. Then I'd be happy to pass down some of what I know while we travel. Okay. I have lived a very long life, so I think you'll find my knowledge useful. Oh, so are you immortal? As of now? Yes? Uh, and that's how I ended up with an hours long with an hours long piggyback ride on my professor's back, learning magic with my mother in 1480 Japan. Yes. <laughs> in all honesty, I don't think I'm able to actually process everything that's happening. But seeing as Galen and Haruka still haven't said a word back to me, I've got no choice but to keep rolling with it. Yes. We take breaks every now and then, though I can t though I can tell it's more for Shizuka than Hikaru, who seems impossibly un unfazed at having to carry me. Yes. 
uh, during the breaks, I actually practice spells with Shizuka when possible. And before I know it, the third day has passed. Oh. My, my, isn't that... <gasps> really? What? Wow, okay, well, I guess... Oh, shit, I didn't... Okay, day four, let's go. <laughs> Alright, day four, <laughs> where are we? Hannah's log, it's the night for the... It's the night of the fourth day, it passed without much event. We stopped at a beautiful mountain lake to rest. Hikaru has occasionally started com commenting on our lessons with little remarks like really and interesting and has even cracked some jokes. It doesn't seem like the things Shizuka has been teaching me were things he knew either so I can hear the wonder in his voice. Aww, cute. Heh, he really is such a closet nerd. Probably gets along really well with Tatsuya. I'm remembering Tatsuya's name, memories of my timeline, and all the timelines I destroyed come rushing back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shit. Sitting on the ground now, in front of a campfire, I hold my head. No, 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 no. This isn't the time to think of that stuff. I've got my mission. I've got bigger things to worry about. I know what I'm supposed to do, sort of. I can... I have to hold out hope that I can fix all of that if I just finish this first. Right. Hikaru comes walking back to interview just then. He and my mother had gone off somewhere to do God knows what. I don't need to know, because I have my own problems to deal with. I still don't quite know what's going on with those two. But this time, Shizuka isn't with him. Oh. He kind of glances at me on the other side of the campfire. He sits down, one leg flat and an arm resting on his knee. He looks into the fire and my breath catches in my throat at the way the light and shadow dances across his serious face. Uh, um, where, where's Shizuka? Yeah. In truth, I'm afraid of the answer, afraid of what they might have been off doing. <laughs> but I can't stand the thought of just sitting there admiring his handsome face all night like some creeper. Huh? Yes. Uh, oh, Lady Shizuka has left for now. I do not know where. Sometimes she does this, though. Does she? Since we are just outside of the village wall, since we are just outside of the village wall, though, she should be safe. Uh, suddenly, Hikaru's eyes snap to mine. His gaze intense. I trust her completely. Okay. And I, I... I see that. Yes, I see. An awkward silence falls as the fire crackles between us. Well, awkward for me anyway. Hikaru seems content enough to have a staring match with the fire. He doesn't look happy though. I wonder what to do or say as the minutes stretch on. Thanks to Hikaru carrying me for once... I Thanks to Hikaru for carrying me for once I don't feel tired through... Uh, I don't feel tired enough to sleep just yet. Yes. I'm not even sure if Hikaru has slept once in the past few days. He is starting to look a little tired, I think. Yeah, maybe you should power nap. I don't know. Come to think of it, this is the first time we've been alone. Ever, really. And my mind helpfully corrects me. I think back in the I think back in a flash to Seneca appearing in Hikaru's apartment. Yes, that was the other time. And then to being trapped in the space between worlds with what I thought was Hikaru's corpse. I shiver violently and Hikaru looks at me. Cold? No. No, not exactly. Hikaru continues to look at me, his curious eyes penetrating my already weak defenses. I sigh. Uh, he- Kazuma. Uh, why do you call me that? Huh? Because it's your name, right? Perhaps in the future, but I am only Hikaru here. Yeah. Oh, uh, really? Then, is it alright to call you that? I notice that you- I notice that you call Lady Shizuka by her first name as if you're familiar with her. Well, I technically am. I have no right to be elevated any- I have no right to be elevated any higher than her. A simple yes would have sufficed, but... Alright then, Hikaru. Alright then, Hikaru. Would you mind if I told you more about what happens to you? I would welcome it, but I would also like to know your relationship with Lady Shizuka. Oh, <laughs> it's a little, yeah. You may not like that explanation. <laughs> I see. I know I am protective of her, and I know that I can be biased about her. Yes. But still, it is the mark of a... But still, it is the mark of a mature man to be able to listen without judgment. Wow, okay. So I will do my best to patiently hear you out to the end. Okay, wow, what a gentleman. Very honorable. Then I'll tell you my story. And so I tell Hikaru everything, starting from the ritual all the way down to me coming to the past. He only stops me once. Your mother, Lady Shizuka, is your mother? Yes. Uh, not like birth mother in a way, but like homunculus clone type of way, you know. I nod. Uh, sort of. I'm not really real anyway, just a copy of the real Shizuka. Yeah, it's kind of weird. I know. After that single interruption, he listens to me without a word. 
but despite his complete silence, not once do I feel like he's not he's not giving me he's not giving my words his utmost attention. Yeah. As I finish telling my story, I finally come to real realize that tears are freely streaming down my face. Oh, yeah, it's very it's a very emotional ride for me. Okay, I've been through a lot. I reach to scrub them away, but Hikaru's hand is on my face, already wiping them away from me. Aww. He drops his hand and takes mine in his instead. Aww. You have been through a lot of suffering. Yes, I have. <laughs> I am sorry. You were thrown into this. Yeah. Hikaru seems as if it... Hikaru seems as, as if he's in just as much pain as me, and I'm surprised for a moment, but then I remember. Yes. Uh, yeah. He's been through lots, too. <laughs> No, he really is a kind person. He always has been. When I first saw you, I... For the first time, Hikaru seems as if he's struggling for words. I did not know what to think. Trusting you was difficult. Yeah, I won't blame you. You look like Lady, you look like Lady Shizuka and yet different. I could tell immediately there was something different about you. You... You seem familiar to me in a way that she never has. Why is that? Because... I... It's- it's complicated, time traveling and shit. He sighs. Uh, that is why it is impossible for you to be just a copy. That logic. I laugh despite myself. I'm not sure if I can fully understand or agree with that. Would it help you then if I told you that I can see souls? Oh, can you? Hana, I can see that you have your own soul. It burns brilliantly and shines in a completely different way than anyone else that I have ever seen. I've been told that a lot. <laughs> Still, please, do not say that. Never think of yourself as anything less than the beautiful soul that you are. Oh, wow. Hey. You have overcome so much. You have sacrificed so much just to stay true to the path you have chosen. I am sure there are many more trials ahead in the future, but you must never, never forget how far you have come already. Wow. But I don't know if sacrifice was the right path, but ruining everyone's lives for one person. I don't know if sacrifice was the right path. <laughs> Thank you, but I, I don't know if I chose the right path. I hurt so, so many people. I messed up so badly. No matter how hard I tried to do the right thing, I still hurt people I care about. It was Suneka who chose to hurt them. She wanted to hurt you, and so she did it through them. Yeah, her own pain and the things she cannot accept misguide her into evil actions. You are simply the person who was entangled and pulled into her twisted plans. That's true. It has nothing to do with you. It was not your fault. At this, I can no longer hold back any hold back my emotions. Why are you so kind? It's not fair. I manage to stay in between sobs. He kind of pulls me close, letting me cry into his shoulder. Oh! Everyone has their own burdens to bear, our own challenges to overcome. The regrets we carry from our actions can feel as if they will suffocate you. But if you but if you can remember how far you have come, all while all while looking ahead to the future, looking toward whatever. Looking toward whatever it is you are fighting for, then I know you can find whatever it is you are seeking or achieve any dream you are reaching toward. Aww. He kind of sighs and moves away from me. Thank you for telling me your story. Aww. I have much to contemplate before we enter the village tomorrow. You should rest now. Okay, feeling worn out from all the tears and recounting my sad tale, I don't argue with Hikaru. I don't argue when Hikaru unrolls the bed for me. I lie down and he sits cross legged in front of the fire. Uh, the flames react. The flames reflecting in his aqua-colored eyes is the last thing I see before I fall into a deep sleep. Okay, that day five then. Day five, Jesus. Okay, well we're gonna we're gonna do it. We're gonna do day five, and I'm gonna see why I am for time because damn, we we get through this really fast. And I saw vaguely remember seeing that day seven and eight or eight and nine are like squished in together. So it's like whoa. Okay, day five. Let's do this. Ooh, it's morning. When I awake the next morning, Shizuka is already back from wherever it is that, sh whatever it was that she went. They are packing up our things, but I notice that Hikaru seems unusually down as he does. What? Really? Why? Uh, Shizuka seems to notice as well as she stops what she's doing and stares at his hunched over form. Did something happen last night? Yeah. I watch as Shizuka leans over slightly and rests a hand on sh and rests a hand on Hikaru's shoulder. He stops what he's doing and looks up at her, his expression unchanging. The moment bothers me somehow, and I look away. I still don't know what they are, but how can I just ask that? I realize I had half hoped that telling Hikaru what she had done would, would change his opinion of her somewhat, but it doesn't seem like it has. 
I don't even know why I care so much anyway. She was there, before me, so it's only natural. Right? Ugh, why am I getting like this? I'm here to save Hikaru, that's all. But my mind betrays me and forces me to remember how kind he was to me last night. Yes. But if you can remember how far you have come while looking ahead to the future, to whatever it is that you are fighting for, then... I know you can find whatever it is that you are seeking or achieve any dream you are reaching toward. Wise words from a wise man. I'm not- I'm not seriously getting feelings for this guy, am I? Yes, you are, girl. I clasped my hands to my cheeks suddenly. Ah, oh, no, why is my face so hot? Just splash some water on your face and you're good to go. You can't be serious, Hana, just because he was nice to you once? <laughs> True. There's a part of me that answers that wasn't when- That wasn't when these feelings, whatever they are, actually started. But I shut down that train of thought immediately and clenched my fist. I'd, it'd be seriously a, it'd be a seriously bad idea to fall for a guy like Hikaru. Why? Besides that, he won't even remember any of this if I succeed. Things will go back to the way they always were. Well then, that just means you can just start anew. You can start working towards building a relationship to the Hikaru once you save him. There's just no way this can end well for me, so I need to just focus on the task at hand for now. I nod to myself and force a smile. Yeah, that's what I'll do. Get his soul fragments, fix all the mess I've caused, and get back to my normal life. Yes. With all Shizuka's, with all Shizuka's taught me, I'm sure I won't need the extra classes anymore either. With that decided, I get up to join my two strange companions. And off we go! To see the wizard! <laughs> We're finally headed into the village this morning. Yes. After days of walking and seeing nothing but forests and precious... And precious few other travelers, I re I'm really excited to visit a town. Hikaru, however, hasn't said a word all morning. His face has been incredibly grim, even for him. He didn't even put up a fight when I told him I could at least walk up the steps by myself. Ah, uh, Mother uh, Shizuka has been quiet as well. Uh, as the endless steps progress, I find myself finally unable to stand the silence. Hikaru? What's wrong? Hikaru's Hikaru, walking slightly behind both of us, merely grunts in response. Okay. So, um, are you feeling alright? <laughs> Another grunt. <laughs> okay, grunt. I can't tell if it's supposed to be a good or if it's supposed to be good or bad, and I sigh. Right then. So, right then. So much for heartwarming talks bringing us closer. I decide to just shut up since apparently everyone prefers that this morning. You'd think they'd be cheerful about getting to their goal after traveling so long, but. Maybe there's something I don't know about going on. Yes. Could it have could it have to do with why Shizuka left by herself last night? Or something to do with the town itself? I rack my brain trying to think of all the possibilities, but in the end, without any more information, I can't really come to a conclusion. Oh wow. How long are these steps? <laughs> God damn it. So about halfway up the steps, or what I pray is halfway up the steps, we sit down to eat some lunch. Wow, these are long steps. Jesus Christ. Alright, so I'm not sure if I've ever had this many rice balls in my life. At least this combined with all the walking should have helped me lose a few extra pounds, I guess. I guess. Shizuka smiles at me as if she knows what I'm thinking. We will be, I, we will be able to get some more food in the town. I'm sure this must have been difficult for you to get used to. Nah, that's fine. I'll deal with it. Uh, I'm still not entirely used to, Shiz to Shizuka comforting me, but I nod. What I really can't wait is to eat some meat. Any kind of meat, really. Or vegetables. Ugh, both sound so good right now. Shizuka giggles and I have to and I have to school my face so my mouth doesn't just drop open. I completely understand. The first meal after a long travel is always the best. Right, I look over at Hikaru, who would have normally joined the conversation by now, but he looks to but he looks to be deep in thought. I glance over at Shizuka and she seems to be feeling the same way I do. Maybe she doesn't know what's going on either? Ark, these two are so secretive. Not that I'm much better, I guess. I decide to break the silence with a neutral question. So, can you tell me anything about the village up ahead? You said it was called Miyazawa? Hikaru looks up at me then. And then immediately goes back to brooding. Oh my god, Hikaru, what's, what's got in your panties and on mine? Okay, so in truth, I do not know much about it. I've only briefly visited once. Okay, I only know that they need assistance with some kind of monster in a nearby lake. Ooh, lake monsters, nice. So of course we had to come. Okay, well, 
Oh, right? A, a monster? <laughs> My mind instantly goes back to the Japanese myths that I know and I shudder. I certainly hope not all of those are real. Well, we're gonna find out. After everything I've learned in the past few months, though, I'm sure whatever it is is terrifying. I bite my lip. Timidly, I try to re I try to call out to the gods just to be extra sure they aren't going to respond. Gallon, Haruka, hello. What's going on? They don't, of course. I don't know what I expected, if anything, but I can't help but wonder. Just what the hell are they doing anyway? Yeah, what's what's the deal, yo? Guys, are you okay? What's going on? Oh, oh, we're getting oh we're getting answers. What's happening? What is happening? Uh, Haruka sits at a table with her fellow gods. The table is made out of stone or perhaps marble. It does not matter, for it floats above the god of chaos's pool of water, unheeding of such things as gravity. Haruka, sitting in a matching chair, gingerly reaches for her teacup. Guys, don't tell me you're having a pleasant, you know, tea. He having like a pleasant round of tea while I'm over here struggling. It is with shaking hands that she brings it to her lips as she watches the other two gods. Oh, so we so we just resorted to having some tea. Okay, I guess that's I guess that's okay. That's better than you know trying to kill each other. Suneka no Mikoto sits to the left of Haruka. Her delicately crossed legs beneath the table bel belies the casual, almost boyish demeanor she demonstrates above. The time goddess lounges, her elbow on the table, face resting in her hand as she sips her tea. As she looks across the table to the god of chaos, who sits on Haruka's right. Have you been in the Divine Realms recently? I was invited rather recently by a certain trio of gods. Really? They showed me a fascinating little box they thought might contain me. Contain you? People are still even attempting that? Laughter escapes his lips, half amused, half something else. Hope springs, in Hope springs eternal, I suppose, even with gods. As human as that is. As human as that is, yeah. Haruka tries to steady her hand as she places the teacup back on the table. She asks herself this how she asks herself how this ended up happening, but she realizes that there is no certain answer. <laughs> Once they had sent Tana off, Galen simply offered Suneka tea. The goddess the goddess had shrugged and said sure, leaving Haruka with her mouth hanging open. A table had been summoned, and that is now how the unlikely trio sat, discussing godly affairs as if it were gossip. Yes, this is a very strange thing happening right now. Haruka could not find it in herself to participate in the conversation, because in all honesty, she was terrified of the two gods. And everything in her divine being told her that this arrangement was wrong. Div divinity represented in order, and chaos went against everything that stood for. Humans aren't so different from us, really. We're all fools. I am curious, though. What happened with the box? Did you leave the idiots alive? Fools they may be, but killing them would have been a waste. And I prefer not to deal with angry little gods attempting to avenge some half-wits. Okay, yet... Yet, despite being born with the power to keep the timelines in order, Seneca was the one taking advantage of the chaos. While Galen was the one trying to restore something, something very precious to her. It's like roles have switched. <laughs> it all made he, it all made Haruka ver feel very confused. But in her heart, she knows that Galen is kind and fun to be with. And Suneka, well, she does not know how to feel about her. Not really, not yet. Haruka promises herself to spend some quiet time in nature to clear her mind of all of this when it is all over, and focuses on the and focuses on the conversing gods instead. I'm sure you're well aware that if you annihilated all of us now, then you wouldn't have to deal with any of this anymore. I wonder if you aren't just too kind. Galen falls quiet for a moment, his eyes turn somewhere far away beyond the Colosseum walls. His lips twist into a melancholy smile. That is not something I will do. His voice is quiet and the words themselves are, are strained, with an almost overwhelming sadness coloring them. Huh. Haruka sends a quiet wish that Hana is doing alright and has located Hikaru already. Yes I have! Don't worry. I did. And we're just struggling up a pair of stairs right now and it started to rain. After our little lunch break we began to walk again, but it started raining. You wouldn't happen to have an umbrella or a spell. I will take care of keeping us dry, if that is alright with you, Hana. Yes, please do. 
I look at her in surprise, still not quite used to her calling out to me this way, but I managed a nod. Her eyes suddenly glow bright green, and with a small flick of her wrist, she creates an invisible bubble around us. Cool. The rain slides right off, no longer drenching us. She gives us a little smile and wordlessly waves her hand again, almost instantly drying us off. Oh, nice! We continue to walk up what seems like never-ending steps in silence. I watch the steps under my feet, only half paying attention to our surroundings. I hear Hikaru gasp suddenly and almost trip over one of the steps. What? Who the hell are you? I look up to see a girl with a traditional umbrella standing on the steps above us. Seina? Seina? Hikaru? What? The girl drops her umbrella and runs up to Hikaru. Oh my! Before he can so much as react, she throws her arms around him, burying her face in his chest. It's really you! I can't believe you came back! What is going on? I had to. You needed help. He kind of gives the small young woman a gentle pat on the back with one hand. Uh, I glance at Shizuka, wondering how she's taking the situation, and see her calmly watching the two with a smile. Uh, Sienna, Sien, Seina seems to realize there's other people there for the first time and grows shy. She lets go of Hikaru and holds onto his arm instead. Ooh, oh my! Hello, I'm Sienna. Uh, are you guys Hikaru's friends? Yes. The question is a simple one, but in that moment, it makes me realize that I don't even really know who I am or not. I don't really know if I am or not. I hope I am. And who knows what Shizuka is to him. Yeah, but Hikaru answers for everyone. They are my companions. They are here to help your village. This lady, this is Lady Shizuka and Lady Hana. Lady Shizuka, the legendary sorceress? Yes. Wow. Shizuka gracefully nods her head in response. I feel kind of lame next to Shizuka, like an afterthought, but... Technically, I do have all of Shizuka's powers. I guess it's just that other people don't know that. Yeah. Uh, it's strange to see my mother recognized like this. She's a celebrity. <laughs> There's so much. There was so much I didn't know growing up. I still can't wrap my head around the fact that any of this is even happening, or was even, or was ever real. Santa looks at me. You two look just alike. Are you related, sisters? Maybe. Sure. Um, we're related, yes. He kind of jumps in to divert the conversation, perhaps sensing my discomfort at having to explain the nature of my relationship with with Shizuka. Sienna, we were we meant to be here earlier. Can you tell me the situation in the village as we walk? Yeah. Of course. What's what's going on? What's the tea? As we continue to walk up the steps, Sienna tells us that there has been a monster terrorizing people who go anywhere near the lake. Oh, okay. I suspect that it might be a kappa. Yeah, I've heard of those. <laughs> Perhaps, but they are not normally so malicious. Uh, we'll know soon enough. Right. Hopefully not a water dragon or some shit like that. It's already evening by the time we reach the village. Hikaru's mood seems to have gone seems to have gone even darker. I sigh. Just what is going on with him? Instead, I look around the village, taking in all the cute fox statues statues everywhere. Cute fox statues everywhere. Yes. You guys sure like foxes. Ah oh, yes. Oh, they're kitsunes. Uh, they're the deities we pray to here. Yes, I figured. Kitsune, the shape-shifting foxes, right? Yes, yes. I love kitsunes. Can you tell me more about them? Can you tell me more about them? Tell me, educate me. I don't remember that much about them. Uh, Sina gets a look of passion in her eyes as she claps her hands together. Yes, go on, go on, go off, girl. Go off. I'd be happy to tell you some facts. Yes. We believe kitsunes possess super superior intelligence, long life, and magical powers. They have multiple tails. A greater a greater number of tails shows how much older and more powerful a kitsune is. Yes. Uh, some people say that a fox will only grow additional tails after it has lived a hundred years. Ooh, okay. When a kitsune gains its ninth tail, its fur becomes white or gold. Okay. It's not really agreed upon what abilities they gain at nine tails, but they're called kyubi no kitsune. Yes. Uh, some people say they gain the abilities to see and hear anything happening anywhere in the world. Or uh, other people say they will have infinite wisdom. Ah, uh, I'm sorry, I'm rambling, aren't I? No, it's fascinating. It's okay, I asked. They sound amazing. They really are, yes. Um, Sienna, I was wondering how it is that you know Hikaru? Uh, well, I met Hiki when he stayed at my village last time to help us out, okay? I was lucky that he let me bug him until we became friends. Huh. That was a that was a quite a few years ago, though. Yeah, quite a few years ago, though. Hiki and I were just a, were just teenagers back then. Oh yeah, 
A teenager? What was he like? Hasiana opens her mouth to respond when we're interrupted by an angry voice. He's like, no, don't expose me. <laughs> How dare you show your face around here? Uh oh, never mind. Who's this? Who is this angry person? We turn to face an angry woman with tears running down her face. Oh, is this what he kind of is worried about? A man stops beside her to see what's going on, then gasps. You, you're the... Hearing the commotion, more villagers are gather around, gasping and pointing right at Hikaru. Yes. What's going on? You're the tra you're traveling with a murderer. Well, really, am I? Am I now? I turn to look at Hikaru, who only stands there, receiving their anger and accusations as the crowds begin to yell things at him. See, Sana grabs onto his arms protectively and glares at the crowd. Can everyone just calm down? I know that people you loved were hurt. I know that people died, but... It was an accident. He was just trying to help. What happened, girl? My husband died because of that monster. Half of our village was destroyed. It, just, it took us years to restore this much. How dare you show your face here now? Oh my gosh. He came back to try and help us. You can't. Uh oh, they're like, that's the last thing we want. <laughs> Sienna. Sienna looks up at Hikaru. Put he look at Sienna looks up as Hikaru puts a hand on her shoulder and then walks off and walks off on his own. Wow, that was a bit of a mess. What the hell? Hikaru, wait. Uh, Hikaru. Before I can even think about what I'm doing, I find my feet moving on my own, chasing after Hikaru. Oh, well, what you know, it's a lake. I follow Hikaru through the village, but he moves so fast that I can't catch up with him. He finally stops at a lake just outside the village. I put my hands on my knees entirely out of breath. My heavy breathing makes Hikaru turn around. Hana. Yeah, aw, tears. Aw, Hikaru. He's a very sensitive man, okay? Seeing the tears freely streaming down Hikaru's face makes me think of the last time he cried in front of me. Yes, Hikaru seems embarrassed and turns away. I look down, uncertain how to approach the wooden demigod. I don't want to be pushed away again, but... Right now, supporting him is more important. Stealing myself, I walk up to him, though he though he's still facing away from me. Uncertain of what I'm doing myself, I stand there for a moment before gingerly putting my arms around him from behind. Back hug, I guess, yes? I press my face into his warm back and tighten my arms around his waist. I feel him stiffen, but I squeeze my eyes shut and try to send him the message that it's okay. Sending good vibes your way. That's not that he's not alone. Gradually, Hikaru relaxes and I open my eyes, staring at the setting sun over the peaceful lake. Uh, hopefully no water monsters will be interrupting this nice moment. Occasionally, I feel little movements that I think I, that I think might be sobs, and I just hold him tighter. Seeing that I haven't been rejected yet, I finally woke up the bravery to speak. Do you want to talk about what happened here? Yeah, Hikaru lets out a heavy sigh and gently loosens my, arm, my hold on him. He turns towards me. It is not something I like to talk about. Oh, okay. But you have already seen and heard many things. I should clarify them at least. To understand, I need to explain what I am first. Who I am. Okay, other than a demigod. Uh, you already know that I am half-god. Being a demigod does not work quite the same as other half-species. It is more like there is a human Hikaru and a god Hikaru both inside of me. Aha, uh -huh, yeah, he did kind of hinted at that when he tried to get us to, you know, escape with Shinji's um, cosmos. Uh, when I was a child, I had difficulty controlling that god. A weak god, though he, though he may be, he is still destructive. That is why my mother gave me this earring. When I was seven years old, I lost control of that god and badly hurt another child. My village, my village called me things like freak. They did not know what I was, or but they feared me. Aww. My father, though only a farmer, was brave and spoke up for me. Aww. He and his wife protected me. They sent me to bed early that night so that I would not hear the awful things they yelled outside our home. But I still heard I could not sleep. I felt as if I was nothing but a burden to my parents. I did not know what I was or why I hurt people like this. Later that night, when the villagers ha had tried had tired, I snuck out. I walked to the shore of a lake much like this one. And that is when my mother came to me for the first time. Haruka no Kaze. Yes. Yes, I had never met her, nor did I know the story of my birth. I was afraid at first, but I could feel in her a sh but I could feel in her a sameness that I had never felt li that I had never felt with anyone else before. She was beautiful, kind and divine against the moonlight. 
And so I felt relaxed in a way I never could remember but feeling before. She introduced herself as Haruka no Kaze, goddess of the winds. She told me that she was my birth mother, yes. She said that she had met my father eight human years ago and fell in love after he had tried to save her. My mother told me that my mother told me that made me half god. But she said that the god inside me was too strong to let out around humans, for they are naturally weaker. Hikaru touches his earrings his earring. That is when she gave me this to limit my power. Ever since that night, knowing that she was watching over me, knowing that I could fit knowing that I could fit in and not hurt any, hurt anyone, I became happy and I was grateful. And when I when I was 16 years old, I met Lady Shizuka. She had come to my village to rest and ended up fighting off a monster alongside me. Huh, that's nice. That is when I decided that I wanted more than to just fit in. I wanted to help other people with my power. So I begged Lady Shizuka to take me with her, but she refused. Sounds like her. Still, I was stubborn. I said farewell to my father and his wife, the only other woman I knew as my mother. And I set off on my own to help people. But I made mistakes during that time. Ah, uh, yeah. During Onin War, a few years back, I tried to help those who were weak that had been swept in, that had been swept up in the war, but... I was not able to save everyone. I saw so many die. Yeah, well, you can only do so much in war, especially. Despite my suppo- Despite all my supposed power, still so many died. Hikaru trails off for a few moments, and I reach out to take his hand. Not looking up, I stroke his hand. Yeah. And and what happened in Miyazawa in Miyazawa Village? In Miyazawa Village was my greatest mistake. After that, after the war, I wandered here. I had seen too much. I wanted someplace quiet I could gather my thoughts. The people here accepted me as I helped them out with everyday tasks. Sienna and I became friends after her parents let me do work for them. I grew to become comfortable here. It became my second home. But really, I was just running away from my pain. And from my dreams too, from what I really wanted to do. You cannot outrun your destiny, it seems. You will always be pulled back in event we will, you will always be pulled back in eventually. A powerful demon attacked the village one day. Okay. I had heard about it attacking other villages, but I figured there was nothing I could do. At least that's what I told myself. Eventually it came to Miyazawa. I tried to fight it when it tried to attack Sienna and I. But my earring, I lost it in the fight, and then I lost control. Oh, I am pathetic for saying this, but I am thankful I have no memory of what happened next. In the end, it was Lady Shizuka stop. In the end, it was Lady Shizuka who stopped me and brought me back to my senses. She had come to help them. I am ashamed that she saw me that way. But I am far more ashamed of what I did while I was like that. People died. I killed people, destroyed their homes. I have no words or defense for my actions. Oh wow. So he just lost complete control of himself. I immediately find myself hugging Hikaru, this time from the front. More hugs! He looks down at me, stunned. But it, it was an accident. You were only trying to help. Even so, I... It was Seneca who chose to hurt them. You are simply the person who was entangled and pulled into her twisted plans. It has nothing to do with you. It was not your fault. Isn't that what you told me last night? Was that a lie? Was it you who chose to hurt those people or that demon? I... The regrets we carry from our actions can feel as if they will suffocate you. But if you can remember how far you come while looking ahead of the future, to whatever it is that you are fighting for, then... I know you can find whatever it is you are seeking, or achieve any dream you are reaching toward. I remember every word you said. It's burned into my mind. Aren't you being hypocritical if you don't take your own, advi your own advice? Right. Yes, our actions both hurt people. Yes, it was an accident, and we should bear responsibility for doing what we can to fix it. But it wasn't our faults, and we shouldn't let it stop. And we shouldn't let us stop it, stop us from moving forward, right? Hikaru stares at me, seemingly at a loss for words. Hana, I. A loud splash from the lake drowns out Hikaru's words, drawing our attention away from each other. Yes, I knew it. He's gonna show up at some point. We turn to face the lake. Who is it? What is it? A large green scaly creature stands before us, dripping with water. Hikaru immediately shoves me behind him. So it is a kappa after all. Oh, okay. I know what those look like. But why in well, why is it here in a lake? Something is off. Hana, can you run and get Lady Sh Shizuka? Uh, no way I'm going to fight too. Are you sure you'll be okay alone? Are you sure you'll be okay? No way, no, wait. No, I got this. 
There's no way in hell I'm leaving you, so don't even try it. I've been trained by a demigod and a legendary sorceress, Shizuka. There's no way I can back down with my pride intact, and there's no way I'm going to lose. So that is how it's going to be. <laughs> yep, that's how it is. The copper runs at us with incredible speed. It's so fast that I barely see it move, dodging just a second before it rushes right past me. Where are you going? How fast? How is it so fast? From what I do remember about Kappa, they're not supposed to be this in this unnaturally fast. He kind of pulls out his sword and meets the Kappa head on as it jumps at him, trying to get a bite out of him. He grunts as he struggles to keep the creature off of him. This is no ordinary Kappa, is it now? It, this strength is unreal. Hikaido's voice is strained as he speaks, and not for a moment does he take his eye off his eyes off of the kappa. Looking at the crazed creature, I have to agree there's something off. Just like there was something off with the creatures that attacked us before. I get lost in those thoughts just a moment too long. Oh, the kappa overpowers Hikaru, making him jump back away from the creature's clawed hand. I barely catch Hikaru's hand reaching for his earring. Whoa! Holy shit! And with a flash of light, Hikaru stands transformed. The kappa stands frozen, much like me, staring at the godly form before us. I snap myself out of my frozen state and push my hands out towards the kappa. It shrieks as walls of ice shoots out from the ground around him. Hikaru wastes no time. Using the opening I've created, he glides forward as if he no longer needs the, the if it's as if he no longer needs to abide by the laws of gravity. That's neat. He makes a slicing motion with his hand. A sharp gust of wind pushes forward, easily cutting through both the kappa and my ice barriers. The kappa gargles, gargles and its body falls to the ground like a sack of potatoes. I stare at the dead creature as my ice barrier melts away, but I find my eyes drifting towards Hikaru. Okay, you did a good job! Come back now! He, still in his godly form, stands near the, near the, sa the slain kappa's body. Hikaru looks at me and I unconsciously take a step back, feeling the intense aura radiating from him. Do you fear me? Hikaru's voice is deeper and almost echoing as he is imbued with divine power. No! A little bit. <laughs> no! No! I look at Hikaru thinking, thinking, then shake my head. No. Maybe I should. No, I probably should. But I don't. I owe my life to you. So even if you were to wish to take it... I shrug. Maybe I'd be alright with that. So even if it's stupid, I have nothing to lose. I trust you. I see. Okay, that disgust, that disgust and the monster we came here to fight already dealt with, we decide to head back to the village. But I can see the hesitation in Hikaru's eyes, so I hold his hand the rest of the way back. Nah, I got you. When we get back to town, people still look at Hikaru with, his, with suspicious eyes. But it's obvious that Shizuka and Sienna managed to calm the situation down. When we explain that the, crop, the kappa is dead and that Hikaru killed it, everyone rejoices. The tension in the village lightens somewhat and no one approaches Hikaru anymore. Alright, plans for a feast are made instead and we're offered a room for the night. Uh, as we stand in the village's center, discussing what to do next, Sienna rushes towards us. She almost trips over her own feet but manages to catch herself just in time. I have some news! Oh great, what? The leader of the village has asked me to go pray at the shrine tomorrow, okay? The village wants to give thanks to our patron god. They also want me to ask for, for further protection so tragedies like this won't happen again. Okay, is that so? Then... Since we managed to take care of the problem so quickly, I will have some time tomorrow. I will go with you to protect you on the journey. You really don't have to. Well, how far is this shrine then? <laughs> I thought it's just like by the village. But it's appreciated. I'd be happy to have you go. I'd be happy to have you along. All right. We will go too then, if you do not mind. Yes. We will spend tomorrow preparing for our journeys, our journeys, and recovering a bit, and then we can join you. Right. Sounds great. Thank you. I'd be honored. In, I'd be honored to travel with you, Lady Shizuka. Yes. I'm kind of excited now. I haven't taken a trip with anyone in a long time. Oh yes, Sienna bows. Thank you so much. Alright, uh, with that we say our good nights and head off to the inn where we'll be staying. Okay, the three of us are given rooms for the night, me with Shizuka and Hikaru with his own. That makes sense. When I get there, I nearly pass out from the long trek and fight, and fight on the spot, yes. My, my last thoughts before slumber turns to Hikaru, yes. I'm really happy, I'm happy to have learned about his past. That he trusted me enough to tell me. 
Maybe that's the whole entire point of this, is to let- to push me back in there to not only get the shard, but to also learn about his past. Finally, I think I'm coming to understand him better. I just wish that he could remember everything when he woke up. Even though I know it's impossible- it's an impossible dream, it comforts me as I fall asleep. Day 6? Yay! Day 6! So I'm gonna leave it here, you guys. I think that's good for now, because like I said, you guys, the last time I checked, it was- five days of uh, ten days so we're gonna split it off into five naturally so yes we will leave it here you guys we have wow that's a lot of shit has happened and you know nothing much is going on on gallon's end even though haruka sadly poor her she's like, caught in the middle of a really strange awkward situation and uh, yeah so yeah, we're off on an adventure in Edo, Japan. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, so we learned a little bit more about Hikaru. Saw his true form as a demigod, which is quite interesting. Because I was like, I wonder how he looks like from all the talks about him, you know, not being in control. But yeah, we, we easily dealt with that situation. And I'm more than convinced that, I don't know, maybe it really is Suneka that has something to do with it. Or maybe it's somebody else, who knows. Anyways, uh, we're going to find out, we're going to continue this adventure more along the way as we, um, yeah, as we go along. So, tune in next time, you guys. But for now, bye!